maybe their social category of what jobs are needed. But um, this whole idea has been around for hundreds of years of, oh my gosh, some new technology is going to replace jobs and interfere with human productivity, and I just don't buy it. Look into, well, artificial intelligence, the categories that are going to grow. Artificial intelligence, machine learning, how to make things smart, how language can be understood. We're going to have breakthroughs there yet. And also look into, uh, I often say, robotics and materials handling. Everything from the robots that manufacture things to transporting things on rails through a factory, transporting them in, even in trucks. Talking about self-driving, when self-driving trucks are going to be before people have it, I think. Um, getting the, material, the, the materials to where they need to be, transferring them to other little robots that take them where you need. We've got hospitals that deliver medicines that way with robots down the halls. I think that that materials handling is a really good thing. They want to understand your market, they want to understand the regulatory framework, and they likely at some point want to partner with regulated entities. So that's a really important common thread that I think runs through a lot of these innovations is the mm -hmm. desire ultimately to partner with regulated entities. And through that engagement, the value proposition internally is also that you get to learn about what's actually taking place. Mm -hmm. So I do think that all of these types of efforts are really critical to get at the understanding that you're pointing out. Yeah. And if I can just add one very quick extra point, just on the collaboration front. I mean, clearly, you know, this is a, this is a conference held in the US. Uh, I'm completely outnumbered on this stage. <laughs> uh, but actually, the degree of international collaboration we need here between regulators as well, because we're seeing the same kinds of issues across a number of markets, I think is incredibly important. You know, Otherwise, we're all going to have to just keep learning the same things over and over again. So, uh, so uh, there's a role for that too. If you think that, like legitimately, if you think that all commerce is moving online, not these small nibbly numbers that we'd seen you know, back in the, in the late 90s and early 2000s, but if there's going to be a majority of commerce, what is that going to look like? Uh, and that is what has suffused the Stripe product from day one in terms of our focus on, you know, we don't just say uh, we're building a developer platform or we're building this as infrastructure as a, you know, a tagline or because you know, this is an important channel for us or something like that. It's because if you're seriously looking at building foundational infrastructure that's going to be used for a vast amount of commerce, it's the only way you can go about building it. It's the only way that makes sense. Um, it's why we've had this focus from day one on having a standardized interface globally because I personally think it's kind of offensive that we still less, you know, there's so many abstraction violations in, in terms of how hard it is to, um, to transact globally and, and, and things like this. So in my view, it's, you had these quick reactions to commerce starting to move online in, you know, 99, 2000. And then if you actually stand back and take a look at, okay, how's this stuff going to work over the long term? At least Stripe is what we came up with. I have a target in mind of you that will resonate with all of you. It's a $7 trillion target. $7 trillion is the benefit to the global economy from reaching full financial inclusion. So the goal needs to be giving people a pathway so we can build a stronger and healthier middle class. A middle class that's $7 trillion strong, that is how we will all benefit from financial inclusion. And that's a rising tide that will raise all boats for the unbanked, the underserved, people here in the room, and beyond. With the new iPhone 10 coming in November 3rd, we are excited to introduce Face ID. Face ID is the new secure way to unlock, authenticate, and Apple Pay. <laughs>